Hi, Dr. Crowder here, and I'm making this video as a short overview for how we can go about calculating probabilities. In genetics, we need to calculate probabilities for many different scenarios. One would be tracking segregation of genotypes or phenotypes in different crosses, or calculating probabilities of an inheritance of a particular mutant or disease when we're analyzing human pedigrees. Let's say you're asked a question about what is the probability of inheriting two traits at the same time. To approach this project problem, we need to review probabilities. And in our review, we're going to take the analogy of a parking lot, as pictured here, that's full of different types of cars of different colors. And in this analogy and in other problems asking about probability, hopefully we can all be aware that a probability is the likelihood of an event occurring. So when you're asked what the probability is, you're being asked what is the likelihood of that event occurring, or you could be being asked what is the likelihood of multiple events occurring together. So let's go back to the parking lot analogy. Here I'm asking what is the probability of randomly choosing a red vehicle? So we're asking what is the likelihood if we go to that parking lot and we blindly pick a vehicle, what is the likelihood that it's going to be a red vehicle? And I'm giving you information here about that parking lot. We're saying that there's a thousand vehicles total in the parking lot. Of those a thousand vehicles, there's 400 black cars, 300 gray cars, 200 red cars, and 100 blue cars. So to approach this, the probability of choosing a red vehicle is equal to the number of red cars divided by the total cars. And in this case, that would be 200 red cars divided by a thousand cars total, which is equal to one-fifth. Or if you were to express this as a decimal, it would be equal to 0 0.2. So the probability of randomly choosing a red vehicle in this parking lot is one-fifth. Now that's pretty straightforward, asking what's the probability of a single event happening. But what about when you're asked the probability of two independent events occurring? So this example in genetics would be inheriting, what's the probability of inheriting this particular trait or that particular trait, or what's the probability of having this particular genotype or that particular genotype? Returning back to the car analogy, now I'm asking what's the probability of either of two possibilities? So here, what is the probability of either a red or a blue vehicle being chosen at random? We just went over that the probability of a red car being chosen is equal to one-fifth. Let's calculate what the probability of a blue car being chosen. The probability of blue is equal to the total number of blue cars, which is 100, divided by the total number of all the cars. So this is equal to one-tenth of probability. So now we've calculated that the probability of a red car being chosen is one-fifth. The probability of a blue car being chosen is one-tenth. So to calculate the probability of either of the events happening, you have to add the probabilities together. So when you are calculating what is the probability of either of two possibilities happening, you add the probabilities together. So the probability of choosing a red or a blue car is equal to one-fifth the probability of choosing a red car plus the one-tenth the probability of choosing a blue car, which equals three-tenths. Or if we express this as a fraction, excuse me, if we express this as a decimal, 0 0.3. 
what about if you're being asked the probability of two independent events occurring together? Meaning, what is the probability of inheriting two traits, two different traits at the same time? Or looking at the probability of two genotypes occurring in a pedigree? We'll see an example what I, of what I mean of this in a couple slides. But first, before we do that, we'll return to our car example. Back to the parking lot. This is an example of a question where I'm asking the probability of two independent events occurring together. And in the question I'm asking, what is the probability of picking a red van? Where now I've given you some additional data. Where in addition to the different colors of cars, I'm telling you the different types of cars that are there. So a single event is what is the probability of the color of the car being red. And then the second event is what is the probability of that red car being a van. So these are two independent events, and I'm asking what's the probability of these occurring together. When you are calculating probabilities of two independent events occurring together, you would multiply the probability of each event. And this is referred to as the product rule. So in this example, we again need to calculate the probability of picking a red car, which we've gone over now is equal to one-fifth and we need to calculate the probability of picking a van, which would be the total number of vans, which is, as listed here, 200 out of a total number of 1,000 cars, which turns out to be one-fifth as well. So the probability of us picking a car that is a red van so the probability of both of these independent events occurring together is equal to the probability of picking a red car times the probability of picking a van. And this would equal to 1 25th. So the probability of picking a red van is 1 25th and we derive this by multiplying the probabilities of each independent event occurring. So now we are going to apply what we just went over to calculating probabilities of inheritance in human pedigrees. So here I'm giving you an example of a human pedigree looking at the inheritance of a rare autosomal disease that we're denoting with the little r. And I've given you information that this is a recessive disease, where individuals in this pedigree that have the disease are colored in with black. So when we're calculating probabilities, we need to try to assign as many genotypes as we can. And in this question, I am asking, what is the probability that individual A and individual B, if they mate, what is the probability that their child will have the disease? So let's walk through this together. We know from the information I've given you that this is a recessive disease. So all individuals that have it must be homozygous recessive. So let's assign those genotypes, little r, little r, little r, little r. Now, to calculate the probability that A and B will have a child that has the disease, it requires that A and B but both, excuse me, both must be heterozygous for the disease. We know from looking at the pedigree that they are not homozygous recessive for the disease because they do not display the disease trait, so they're not colored in black, they don't have the disease. And for them to have a child that has the disease, they have to both be heterozygous. So we need to calculate what the probability is that each of these individuals are heterozygous. So for this, we need to go back to their parents. For these two individuals, 1.1 and 1.2, for them to have a child that has the disease, this individual right here, 2.1, they, mo they both have to be heterozygous. So they have to be big R, little r, big R, little r. This is the only way that both of them mating together would have progeny that have the disease. We know that they don't have the, we know that 1.1 and 1.2 don't have the disease meaning that then they could either be homozygous dominant for R 
or heterozygous. And because they've had a child that has a disease, they both have to be heterozygous for the disease. So, if 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2 are both heterozygous, they have to be, what's the probability then that A is heterozygous for the disease? We're going to draw it up here. So we can go to our Punnett square, where we have R, big R, little r, big R, little r, and it gives you big R, big R, big R, little r, big R, little r, little r, little r. We can exclude one of these classes because we know that individual A does not have the disease, so they cannot be RR. So of the possible genotypes, there is a two-thirds probability that individual A is heterozygous for the disease. We have three different classes of phenotypes, big R, big R, big R, little r, big R, little r. And of those three classes, two of them are heterozygous. So the probability that A is heterozygous for the disease is two-thirds. And if we go over now to individual B and look at their parents, the exact same scenario is true. These parents have to be heterozygous for the disease. They don't have the disease, but they produced a child that has the disease, so they have to be heterozygous. And the calculation would be the exact same then for whether B is heterozygous for the disease. And since it's the same, it would be two-thirds. So if we go back to our Punnett square here at the top, it's the same exact situation where both parents of B are heterozygous, meaning that B has a two-thirds probability of being heterozygous itself, herself. And therefore, then, for individuals A and B to have the, a child with the disease, let's draw our Punnett square again. It's the same one we drew above. But now we're doing, let's say this is individual A, an individual B. Big R, big R, big R, little r, big R, little r, little r, little r. These are all the possible progeny for individual A and B if they're heterozygous. And of these, we can see that one-fourth would have the disease. So the probability of them having a child with the disease would be one-fourth if they're both heterozygous. Okay. We've calculated all the probabilities we need to now to do our final calculation. The probability of A and B having a child with a disease is the probability that A is heterozygous, because the individual has to be heterozygous for the disease, times the probability that B is heterozygous, times the probability that if they're both heterozygous, their child, what the probability is that their child will have the disease. So here, we're saying that all three of these independent events have to occur, occur together for A and B to have a child with a disease. The first is that A has to be heterozygous. The second is the probability that B has to be heterozygous. And then the third is, if A and B are both heterozygous, what's the probability that their child will have the disease? And so to solve this, then we would multiply all the numerators and all the denominators. So 2 times 2 times 1 is 4. 3 times 3 times 4 is 36. And then we can reduce this down to 1 ninth. So the probability that A and B would have a child with the disease is 1 ninth. And we calculated that by multiplying the probability that A is heterozygous for the disease times the probability that B is heterozygous for the disease, times the probability that if they're both heterozygous, they would have a child with the recessive disorder. So here, again, is how we multiply probabilities when we are asking what's the probability of multiple independent events occurring at the same time. And for them to have a child with the disease, each of these events have to occur at the same time, or all of the events have to occur together. In this simplified case, I'm giving you a very simple pedigree where I am giving you the genotypes of the parents for a rare autosomal recessive disease again, and I'm asking you, what's the probability of them having a child that's either homozygous recessive or homozygous dominant? So here I'm asking, 
what's the probability of either of these events happening? So let's go back to our Punnett square. These are all the possible progeny genotypes. And we can see that the probability of them having a homozygous dominant child is one-fourth. There are four different progeny classes. One of them is homozygous dominant. The probability of having a homozygous recessive child is one-fourth for the same reasons. So because I'm asking what's the probability of either event occurring, not them occurring together, either or, we would add the probabilities of each event occurring. So the probability of them having either a homozygous recessive or homozygous dominant child is one half, the sum of each of the individual probabilities. So hopefully this tutorial gives you a better idea of how to calculate, how to go ab about approaching how to calculate progenies when you are looking at inheritance in human pedigrees, or this would apply to the same if you are trying to track genotypes from different crosses, for example, analyzing a Punnett square or a branch diagram for a trihybrid cross or dihybrid cross, and you want to know the probability of an individual um, inheriting one, two, or more particular traits.